Welcome to part 4 of our mini-series on what do we know about Esau or Edom. This is a picture of Abisha the Hyksos and in this video we're going to be speaking about the mysterious people known as the Hyksos. But before we do that let's just recap what we've been speaking about in this series. So we were looking at Esau or Edom but from the perspective of the wives. That's what we did in the first video, the wives of Esau, the Hittite and the Ishmaelite wives. We also learned about the intermarrying with the Horites in the land of Sa'ir. And then in our video, in our investigation, we saw this connection with Edom and Ishmael with the Nabatians. That was part two. We also learned about the Edomite converts. And also we spoke about the book of Jasher and this link with Edom and Kittim becoming one kingdom described in the book of Jasher. And then on the historical record, we were looking at the King Herod and the Romans and that relationship. Now we're going to be thinking about Esau and Edom and the mysterious people known as the Hyksos. Okay, so the Hyksos, we learn that they ruled Egypt with the 15th dynasty of Egypt, 1650 to 1550 BC. And it says their seat of power was in the city of Avaris in the Nile Delta. So they ruled Lower and Middle Egypt, but not all of Egypt. So they ruled alongside Upper Egypt. And it says here that according to the Greek Egyptian priest historian Menetho in the 3rd century BC, the term Hyksos is used ethnically to de designate people of probable West Semitic Levantine origin. So according to Menetho, the Hyksos coming from the Levant or from the land of Canaan. And Menetho portrayed the Hyksos as invaders and oppressors. But this interpretation is questioned by modern Egyptology. Let's see what else we can learn from this page before we carry on. So we spoke about this part that they didn't control all of Egypt. So they ruled alongside the upper Egypt. And this pharaoh, Ahmose I, he was the pharaoh that actually defeated the Hyksos and chased them out. And there's a bit of debate about what does this word Hyksos mean. For a long time, we've had the main idea of it being shepherd kings. But we're also learning that it could, it could rather mean the ruler of foreign lands for this term Hyksos. So we might come back to this page to see what else we can learn. But what I, what I want to do is actually use a different source, which is Edom and the Hyksos, discovery of a largely early Edomite empire. And this is by... David J. Gibson. This is the source we're going to be using. And he speaks about this Edomite Empire because you know, for many centuries we had maybe the impression that you know, Edom was a, a minor kingdom, a small kingdom, not very significant. But he argues in this paper that you know, Edom was a very significant kingdom and maybe even you know, a very large empire. That's what he speaks about in, in this paper. But I want to show you what we're going to be looking at because what he does is he puts forward a theory of trying to connect Edom, the Edomites with the Hyksos and he puts forward this theory with these six points because these are various descriptions of the Hyksos and then tries to prove can the Edomites match all these descriptions so let's have a look to see what his theory is okay so it says to, dis to discover whence came the Hyksos we find we must look for a people who can rightly be called any and all of the following Asiatic that is racially not Egyptians but foreigners and strangers from the East Barbarians Arabians Phoenicians so from the land of Canaan Semites that is a people speaking a Semitic tongue but with a Hurrian admixture and the last one a people so like the Israelites that the two could rather be easily be confused the one mistaken for the other these are the six points that he, you know, he's saying that the Hyksos have been described as, and then, you know, to, just to summarize the whole paper, you know, he believes that the that the Edomites can actually answer all these questions. But let's first just think about this this point six, why it's speaking about the Israelites. Let's just try and explain that, because if we look at the time frame of this this dynasty of Egypt, 1650 to 1550 BC. We can see that's a very, it's going to be a very similar time frame to 
either the Israelite captivity or their exodus. And because the, um, the Hyksos have been described as being similar people to the Israelites, you know, some people have put forward theories trying to connect the Hyksos with the Israelites and even Josephus, he's kind of played a role in this with connecting the Israelites with the Hyksos and maybe saying that this this history of the Hyksos could be confused with the history of the Israelites. So that's why he has this this point six that the Hyksos have been confused with the Israelites, but in his opinion, you know, the Hyksos were not Israelites, they they were Edomites according to this paper. And we can see that that makes sense because the Hyksos here in point three being described as Arabians. So, you know, the Israelites are not Arabs. And that's something that it doesn't make sense for what Josephus is saying, because he also denotes them as being Arabs. But you know, why would Josephus call you know the Israelites Arabs? They weren't, or they weren't an Arab people. So that's maybe why this confusion is coming in. And we also mustn't forget why we have this part here with the Edomite converts. Remember how we said we must always keep that in the back of our minds that we have these people. That um, yeah, it's a brother nation that Edom can be confused with Israel. Maybe we're seeing that with this uh, with the Hyksos. But yeah, it's very interesting how he connects Edom with the Hyksos, and it goes on to explain that he thinks they can, they can answer all these points. And we've already seen the connections with Edom and the Arabs with the Nabatians. And you know, the, Edom, the Edomites would also be coming from the land of Canaan, so they could be described as Phoenician. And you know, a Semitic tongue, we know that Edom is from the line of Shem, but here we see they have an, a Hurrian admixture, and we're going to speak about that next with the Hurrians. And also we can see that they're described as Asiatic, and that could also maybe be the influence of the Hittite wives, because we, we haven't spoken about the Hittite wives and finding evidence or a connection with on the historical record with Edom and the Hittites, but maybe we can start to see that influence of these wives with if it's true what he's saying with the Edomites being described as Asiatic. So very very interesting um, paper definitely worth a read if you'd like to I'll put it in the description below but before we go on to the Hurrians just one more connection with Edom and the Hyksos but it's a little bit of a different angle and it's actually the Amalekites. So there are some different theories that maybe the the Hyksos pharaohs could have been Amalekite pharaohs and the Hyksos, also known as the Amu, and could this be in connection with the, um, the, the Amalekites? And this, uh, this page tries to put forward an interesting idea that we know that when the Israelites were coming out of the Exodus, you know, the first people they came across were the Amalekites, and there was a war between them. And this page is saying that you know, after that war, the Amalekites may have seen Egypt in a vulnerable state and took advantage. Because we know that you know, the, the whole Egyptian army was destroyed in the Sea of Reeds. And we also know that you know, Egypt suffered greatly with the, you know, all those plagues. So that it they would have been in a very vulnerable, weak state. And he was in, on this page saying, you know, maybe the Amalekites may have, may have moved in because of all those, um, those reasons. Now, I wanted to see if I had something highlighted here that kind of speaks about this. I just want to see if I have it highlighted. I think it's here. So if you read this part here, this is speaking about the Hyksos, their arrival in Egypt. A people of ignoble origin from the east, whose coming was unforeseen, had the audacity to invade the country, which they mastered by main force, without difficulty or even battle. So it's kind of describing these Hyksos moving in without difficulty or, or even battle. So that's kind of what he was saying on this page that, you know, where's the Egyptian army? Where's the Egyptian defense against the Hyksos? You know, no Egypt was mighty in the ancient world. How come they weren't able to put up a battle against this invading, you know, against these Hyksos? So it is an interesting theory that maybe, maybe this could be in, in the time of the, of the Exodus with the, with the Hyksos moving into Egypt when they were vulnerable. So very interesting theory and 
but it's also very similar to what he is saying because this first one that we started with, this first source, you know, is Edom. You know, connecting Edom with the Hyksos. We know that the the Amalekites are an Edomite nation, so it's you know it's kind of saying something similar, but just a different angle. But now I want to speak about the Hurrians because if we go back to this page, we can see that one of these points we're speaking about the Hurrian admixture. If we go down. So they spoke a language that was Semitic tongue, but with a Hurrian admixture. So the, Hyks the Hyksos having a Hurrian admixture. And we're going to speak about the Hurrians because we've got on this page here, were the Hurrians the same people as the Horites? Because some scholars connect the Hurrians with the Horites of the Bible. And we know that the Edomites intermarried with the Horites. So could this be maybe lending more support to this idea what he's speaking about that we know that the Edomites intermarried with the Horites and we can see that the the Hyksos also have a connection with the Hurrians from what he's saying on this page but I just want to show you something interesting that I came across because if we go to the page on the Hurrians we can see there's different names here for the for the Hurrians we've got the Huri or the Hari or the Kurdites or the Hori or the Kurdi, or the Hori. So you can see potentially some of these words quite close to Hori, maybe Hori the Horite. But I wanted to show you something that was, um, I wasn't expecting to see it when I came across it. I want to uh, show you something here. It's this civilization known as the Sao, the name pronounce it, the Sao civilization, the Sao people. And they um, describe themselves as the men from another time one of the oldest civilizations of Central Africa. An ancient civilization was developed by the Sao people in the region of southeast of Lake Chad, located in the far west of Chad and the northeast of Nigeria. But the very interesting thing that I saw here, I want to show you, is um, it had long been suggested that the Sao were descendants of the Hyksos, who conquered ancient Egypt, that they moved south from the Nile Valley into the Middle Africa under pressure from invaders, or that they, origin they originated in the Bulma Oasis north of Lake Chad. So I was really um, surprised when I came across this. I wasn't expecting to come across it. I was looking at the Sao people. And we see here that they've been described, according to their maybe their legends, that they're descendants of the Hyksos. Isn't that amazing? So we're speaking about this very mysterious people known as the Hyksos, and now we have um, a civilization in the same towards Central Africa being connected with them. But it also, this is this part's interesting because it's giving kind of two alternatives or two options. You know, either that the Hyksos, you know, moved into Central towards Central Africa, or that they originated from this land, and that could be quite important because. Remember how, we'd, if we go back to kind of recap what we were speaking about with the Hyksos, that it said that according to Manitho, they had, Manitho, they had a Semitic or Le Levantine origin, and they're being described. They've been described as a Phoenician people, so coming from the land of Canaan. And then we have the Sao civilization or the Sao people, su the suggestion that they were descendants of the Hyksos, but did they maybe actually originate? in Africa, you know, in this region around Lake Chad. So this is what we're going to speak about because this is potentially quite important. Now, they live in this region by a river, and the river is very interesting. I want to show you. We have this river called the Kari, the River Kari, and this is the region where we have the Sao civilization. So can you see how this river could be quite important if we just recap the Hurrians? So if we go back if we look at some of these names, so we had the Hori or the Hari, the Kurdites or the Hori or the Kurdi or the Hori. This one here is very interesting here, the Kurdi. And I just want to show you something else about the Hurrians. Okay, so it says here that by the late 1400s BCE, the Egyptians regularly referred to Canaan as Karu or Kuru land and sometimes identified prisoners from Canaan as Hurrians. 
So now we see the um, this land of Canaan being called by the Egyptians sometimes Karu or Kuru, and this seems to be because of the because of the Hurrians. And now we can see this with the with these different pronunciations like the like the Kuri. It's, so it's very interesting that we have this river, the the river Kari, and we have this people who are being connected with the um, with the Hyksos, and this river. It's a very similar word to how the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, called the land of Canaan, Karu or Kuru. Could that word be, you know, connected or very similar to this Kari? So very could be a very interesting link that because if we try to put that all together, that we have the people known as the Sao people who are being connected with the Hyksos, but this page says, you know, what was their origin? Maybe their origin could have been this region around, um, let's say, in this country of Chad, or yeah, you know, it's kind of on the borders of quite a few different countries. But what if their origin was this region? And if they're being connected to the Hyksos, and the Hyksos are being described as coming from the land of Canaan, that could kind of support the idea for the land of Canaan being in this region. Because, you know, the Hyksos are described as having Levantine origin or um, you know, Phoenician origin or coming from the land of Canaan. And then we have a people that are being connected with the Hyksos and you know, they're living in this region, this region of Chad, and being connected with the Hyksos. I was quite, I was very, um, yeah, surprised when I came across it. But then we also have this very interesting river, you know, this Kari River, which seems to be quite a similar word to the, the names that the Hurry, the Hurrians are known after, like the Kuri. And we see that the Egyptians they called the the land of Canaan the Kuru land or the Kadu after the Hurrians. And it also says down here that in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word Hord, I think it's supposed to say Hori, renders the term Hurrian. So on this page, they also have the idea that the Hurrians could be the same people as the Horats. So I think that's quite a, this could be quite an important information that um, we could have a link with the people of the Hyksos or the Hyksos people with Central Africa but then also a potential link that could link um, the land of Canaan to Central Africa as well, if we think about all those details. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Definitely could be an important one. So we're looking to what, thinking about what we can learn about Esau and Edom. And this is a very interesting connection with the Hyksos. But the Hyksos have been connected to quite a few different peoples. You know, even the Hittites, I, saw, I, bought, I did some research with the a connection with the Hittites and the Hyksos. So it's very interesting that this Hyksos, you know, it could be quite a, a mixed group. You know, it could be maybe a mixed um, multitude of maybe Edom, Hurrian, or Horite, and also Hittite. But yeah, very interesting, a mysterious people. And I do think there's some very interesting connections here with the, with Edom. But it's very also interesting with the Hurrians. We're now learning about the Hurrians. Could they be the same people as the Horites? And what about this this connection with the Sao people, the Sao civilization, being connected with the Hyksos? And we see them living by a Kari river, which seems to be very similar to this word that Egypt called the land of Canaan. So, yeah, very interesting how we're coming across this information that is could support the idea for the land of Canaan being, you know, in Africa. So let me know what you make of this information. And I'm going to leave this series on Edom open. I'm not going to finish it just yet because we might um, come across more information and yeah, maybe do another video on Edom you know, as we go. So I'm not going to close off the series. I'll leave it open. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.